Look at our planet from space. A brilliant, swirling blue gem, isolated in the immense blackness of the cosmos. That color is our identity. It's the signature of life itself. But this beautiful water presents one of the greatest mysteries in science. Our world was born a searing ball of molten rock where no liquid could possibly survive. So how did it get here? The journey of Earth's water is an epic tale of chaos and chance, involving violent cosmic deliveries and a planet-wide recycling system so vast it's almost impossible to comprehend. This is the story of where our water came from and the incredible journeys it has taken. Picture the early solar system, a chaotic construction zone. Our infant Earth is a glowing inferno, constantly hammered by massive asteroids and comets. Any water present at its birth would have instantly vaporized into the void. So, scientists believe the water arrived later. The prime suspects are comets, often called dirty snowballs or icy dust balls. These ancient relics, hurling in from the frozen outer reaches of the solar system, are packed with water ice. In a cataclysmic period called the Late Heavy Bombardment, they rained down upon our planet, delivering vast quantities of water over millions of years. But comets weren't the only deliverers. There's a more subtle yet incredibly important source, water-rich asteroids. Certain types of asteroids, known as carbonaceous chondrites, are like cosmic sponges. Their mineral structures are naturally hydrated, meaning they have water, in the form of hydroxyl groups, locked inside their very chemistry. As these asteroids were incorporated into the growing Earth, this trapped water was released. How? Through the planet's incredible internal heat. This leads us to the final step, volcanic outgassing. As the planet's interior heated these water-bearing rocks, the water was liberated. It rose to the surface through countless volcanic eruptions, not as liquid, but as superheated steam. For eons, volcanoes acted as the planet's sprinkler system, spewing water vapor into the nascent atmosphere. As the Earth's crust finally cooled enough, this vapor condensed and it rained. It rained for thousands of years, slowly filling the vast low basins to create the very first primitive oceans. With the oceans in place, the great surface dance began. This is the hydrological cycle, the endless loop that sustains all life on land. It's powered by the sun. Solar energy causes water to evaporate from the oceans, rising invisibly into the air. High in the atmosphere, it cools and condenses around tiny dust particles, forming the billions of droplets that make up clouds. Winds carry these clouds across continents, where the water falls back to Earth as rain, snow, or hail. But this is only the surface story. There is a second, much deeper and slower cycle at work, the internal water cycle, or the deep geological cycle. At subduction zones where tectonic plates collide, the ocean floor is actually dragged down into the Earth's scorching mantle. Seawater, locked in the seafloor rock, hitchhikes a ride hundreds of miles underground. This water dramatically lowers the melting point of the mantle rock creating magma. This water-rich magma eventually rises, fueling volcanoes that then release the water back into the atmosphere, completing a loop that can take millions of years. So the water on Earth is ancient and constantly on the move. The same molecule that once fell from a comet, then circulated in the ocean of a dinosaur, then spent a million years locked in an ice sheet now falls as rain on a city. It's been deep within the earth and high in the clouds. It carved the Grand Canyon and quenches your thirst today. We are borrowing this water. It's a finite resource on an infinite journey, 
connecting the birth of our solar system to every single living thing on this pale blue dot 